Everybody seems to know that you know, our bones are full of calcium and all that kind of stuff, but what people don't know so well is that the calcium comes out of our bones and fills our blood. So all of our cells in our body are, are, are basically covered by this very calcium rich environment. And that's extremely important because what calcium does inside those cells. Mathematics has a very important role to play in the study of these kinds of things. And the major reason for this is that the behaviour of calcium inside muscle cells or nerve cells or epithelial cells, skin cells, liver cells, egg cells, whatever, the behaviour of calcium is really complicated. They form these really complicated intricate patterns. And the only way, really the only way you can study an intricate pattern is by using quantitative methods. And quantitative methods means you need a mathematical model. And that's where mathematicians come in. Take, for example, a smooth muscle cell inside your lung. And inside that airway smooth muscle cell, if you measure the concentration of calcium inside that cell, you can see the concentration goes up and down and up and down. And that oscillation in the concentration of calcium is what makes that airway smooth muscle cell contract. And when those tubes get contracted, we can't breathe so well. And that is essentially called an attack of asthma. And therefore, we need to understand how does the calcium inside these airway smooth muscle cells, how does that control, not what the cell is doing, but how does it control what the whole lung is doing? What I've been doing is to try to put together the multiple scales that different people on the project have been studying into one unified multiple scale model. Uh, and there are a lot of interesting questions about how these things interact. So we have from the little tiny things, the calcium oscillations, all the way up through the big things, how does the lung behave? How do the individual cells constrict the airways? And how do those constricted airways result in you not breathing? Our mathematical models really have a real world application. Um, in the longer term, we would hope that it will help to test and guide new therapies, uh, so different pharmaceutical therapies, uh, to target different regions within the lung, perhaps to tailor therapies uh, better towards certain patient groups. So perhaps children may respond better to a different therapy than, say, uh, an adult with asthma. Modern mathematics is a study of the world around us in just the same way that chemistry or physics or biology is a study of the world around us. But the way that mathematicians study the world, we just use different tools. We care about diseases, we care about how the body works, we want to solve things, we want to answer questions, and we just happen to use mathematics as our particular tool to answer these kinds of questions. But the drive is the same. We care about understanding things like diseases.